The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining the Debbie's Dream Foundation Curing Stomach Cancer Training Webinar for our 2019 Capitol Hill Advocacy Day. I am Brittany Starks, Communications Coordinator for DDF, and I will be moderating today's webinar. In a moment, I will introduce you to DDF's Executive Director, Andrea Eidelman, to welcome you. Then we will be joined by Camille Bonta, our advocacy consultant, who will conduct the advocacy training. You will be able to ask questions throughout this presentation. You can type your question into the white text box that appears on your screen. At the conclusion of the presentation, Camille Bonta will address questions as time allows. If we are unable to answer all questions during the time allotted, we will respond in an email to all advocates. In addition, the recording of this webinar will be accessible to all advocates on the Advocate Resource Center on our website. I would now like to introduce the Executive Director of Debbie Stream Foundation, Curing Stomach Cancer, Andrea Eidelman. Hello, my name is Andrea Eidelman, and I am the Executive Director for DDF. Welcome to the Advocacy Day Training Webinar. I look forward to meeting each and every one of you in Washington, D.C. at the end of the month. Debbie Stream Foundation is dedicated to raising awareness about stomach cancer, advancing research for funding and providing education and support internationally to patients, families, and caregivers. Our ultimate goal is to make the cure for stomach cancer a reality. You can learn more about visiting our website at www.debbiesgreen.org. In a few short years, DDF has achieved many great milestones. We have 29 chapters across the United States as well as chapters in Canada and Germany, and events are ongoing around the country. Our patient resource education program helps patients, their families, and caregivers around the world by matching them with survivors and caregivers using disease-specific criteria, including stage, biomarker, and location. We host educational webinars and symposia year-round, and our website contains in-depth information about stomach cancer that can be translated into more than 60 languages. We also have provided $950,000 in research grants and will award an additional $50,000 to researchers in 2019 to bring us to our $1 million goal in providing research grants. We advocated during our Stomach Cancer Capitol Hill Advocacy Day to add stomach cancer to the Department of Defense's peer-reviewed cancer research program. Each year, we return to Washington, D.C. to mandate funding for researchers. These efforts have resulted in nearly 18 million being awarded to stomach cancer researchers over three fiscal years. Over the years, hundreds of DDF stomach cancer advocates have traveled to Capitol Hill to ask Congress to invest more federal resources in stomach cancer research. Specifically, Congress was asked to include stomach cancer among those cancers eligible for research funding under the Department of Defense's peer-reviewed cancer research program. And we won. Since fiscal year 2015, Millions of dollars have been awarded to stomach cancer researchers, and none of this would have happened without DDF advocates on Capitol Hill meeting with their members of Congress each year. There is still so much to be done, so we cannot become complacent, which is why your participation in our 2019 Advocacy Day is so important. Your participation can help change the course of stomach cancer research in this country. Now I will review the itinerary for Monday, February 25th and February 26th. Advocates will arrive to Washington, D.C. on Monday morning. We will be hosting a welcome lunch beginning at 12 p.m. After everyone arrives and we get through introductions, everyone will spend the afternoon in educational breakout sessions 
including a patient support activity led by Nicole Berngard, DDF's events manager, and a caregiver discussion led by North Carolina chapter leader and DDF board member, Christy Leonard. There will be a break in between each session. After the breakout session, Camille and her team will conduct an advocacy training session where you will receive tips and training to prepare for meetings on the Hill. At the end of the day, advocates will have a break to get ready for dinner. Dinner will start at 6.30 p.m. where we will take a group photo and also present an award to our volunteer of the year. Tuesday is the day we will visit the Hill. After breakfast, we will depart the hotel as a group to take photos at the Capitol building. Then groups will attend their scheduled meetings between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. The meetings will be followed by a celebratory dinner. Advocates will have a break from 5 to 7 p.m. to have time to relax and get ready before dinner. We will have a photographer and videographer at all times during the event. Therefore, upon arriving at Capitol Skyline Hotel on Monday, February 25th, all participants will need to sign a media release form. If you haven't done so already, now is the time to make your hotel reservation. It is a very busy time in DC and rooms are booking fast. We still have a few rooms left in our block at Capital Skyline Hotel, so please contact them now to get yours. Capital Skyline Hotel is the most convenient option as we will have all meals and meetings there. Our discounted room rate is $100 per night and the deadline to book is February 19th, so please take advantage. I would now like to turn the presentation over to Camille Bonta from Summit Consulting, who will provide us with more information about advocacy and the event. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. And I want to thank you all for being part of Debbie's Dream Foundation's advocacy efforts and for taking time away from your families and work to travel to Washington, D.C. later this month. I can't wait to see all of you. Next slide, please. You all are the voice of stomach cancer. And when you go to Capitol Hill on February 26th, you are gonna be increasing awareness of stomach cancer through your own experiences. And you're gonna be educating members of Congress and their staff about the lack of foundational knowledge about stomach cancer. And you're going to be asking for more research funding that can lead to better treatments and maybe someday a cure. Next slide. Hill meetings are being scheduled for you based upon your registration information. And your meeting schedules are going to be provided to you when you arrive in Washington, D.C. Background materials will also be given to you upon your arrival. These materials are gonna assist you in preparing for and conducting your Hill, Hill meetings. Now these materials will also be made available to you prior to your lobby day, and they're gonna be posted on the Debbie's Dream Foundation website. You, to access those materials, you're gonna, add, you're gonna navigate to the advocacy page under the events tab at the top of the Debbie, Debbie's Dream homepage. And then once you're in DC, you're gonna get folders with fact sheets and other materials to provide to your congressional offices. Once the materials are posted on the Debbie's Dream Resource um, Center online, you'll get an email uh, and, and directions on how to access those materials. Next slide. Now you might be wondering what to wear on your Hill visits. Uh, men are asked to wear a, a jacket and a long sleeve buttoned up shirt and tie, and women in a suit, pants or a skirt or a dress. We just ask that uh, you don't wear jeans and, and try to avoid anything um, that might trigger the um, the metal detectors, like big pieces of jewelry or, or belt buckles. Um, we just want to make sure that you can get through security um, as quickly and smoothly as possible. Uh, most importantly, uh, wear comfortable shoes because you're going to be doing a lot of walking on Tuesday, and I can't um, underscore that uh, enough. 
You're also going to get a lapel pin to wear and distribute to members of Congress and their staff. And then lastly, you're encouraged to wear a periwinkle or some shade of blue uh, for the photos that we do on Capitol Hill and to avoid any, any bright colors for your group photo. Next slide. Now we're going to move on to what to expect in a Hill meeting. Meeting with a member of Congress does not need to be a stressful ordeal as long as you are well prepared and you know what you're going to say and that you can keep the discussion on message. On Monday, you're going to be part of an advocacy training that's going to be led by me and my colleague, Megan Gordon Don. Um, Megan mo most recently worked uh, as vice president for uh, government affairs and advocacy for the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network, and now she is the executive director of the Deadliest Cancers Coalition. And for those of you who don't know her, she brings with her a wealth of grassroots advocacy experience, and I think you're really going to enjoy the training session that we have planned for you. Now, most importantly, you want to stay on message. Uh, while members of Congress and their staff are genuinely concerned about their constituents' views, uh, just keep in mind that they also don't like to commit to requests on the spot, so it's going to be important for you to stay on message and press your request politely yet firmly. Now, when you sit down for your meeting with a member of Congress or a congressional staffer, you're going to start by introducing yourself. You're going to need to make sure that you say where you live and that you're visiting on behalf of Debbie's Dream Foundation. And if it's a repeat visit with a lawmaker or a congressional staffer that you've met before, remind them. Remind them that, that you were there last February. Um, and, uh, um, and after those introductions, then you're going to tell your story. You're going to explain what led you to becoming an advocate for stomach cancer research. Next slide. Now, before you state what action you want the member of Congress to take, uh, always remember to uh, take an opportunity to say thank you if that's appropriate. Included in the background materials that you're going to be getting is going to be a list of lawmakers who have been helpful to Debbie's Dream Foundation in the past. So if they signed the letter last year, we want to make sure that we express our gratitude first off in that meeting. Now, when you're making your request, you're, you can use facts and figures to make your point, but I don't want you to overwhelm yourself or the lawmaker or the staffer with too much data. You're going to have folders with fact sheets to provide to your congressional offices, and that's going to be full of numbers and details. While you're face-to-face -face with the lawmaker or the staffer, the most important thing you can do is to use your experience as the tool of persuasion. Next slide. Now, before you end your meeting, uh, you're going to want to close the deal. You're going to ask a member of Congress or the staffer if they'll support your request. And if they can't give you an on-the-spot answer, you're going to let them know that you're going to be following up. And lastly, remember to say thank you. Make sure they have your contact information and offer to be a resource to them. And say thank you to them even if they say they can't sign your letter or they can't do specifically what you've asked them to do because there may be another way to secure their support. Next slide. So for this advocacy day, our primary request is going to be to ask members of Congress to support maintaining the inclusion of stomach cancer in the Department of Defense's peer-reviewed cancer research program. And you're going to do this by asking the member of Congress to sign a letter to the Appropriations Defense Subcommittee with this request. Now, this letter is going to be led again by our longtime champion, uh, Representative Frankel. And then this year, she's going to be joined by Representative Adam Kinzinger. Um, he's a Republican from Illinois, and they will be the champions for our House letter. And in the Senate, the letter is going to be led by Senator Hirono, who has been our champion in the past. Now, sometimes members of Congress, particularly those who sit on the Appropriations Committee, will say to you that they don't sign on to these types of request letters. When this happens, you can respond by politely asking the lawmaker to directly submit 
to the Defense Appropriations Subcommittee a request that stomach cancer be kept in the peer-reviewed cancer research program. Every single lawmaker has an opportunity to make individual appropriations related requests to the various subcommittees. And in fact, these individual requests can carry significant weight, especially when a member of the Appropriations Committee makes the request. When you get your Hill schedule, those schedules are going to indicate whether or not a, a member of uh, Congress that you're meeting with or their staff, whether that member sits on the Appropriations Committee. So you're going to know going into that meeting if this is a member of Congress um, who is particularly important because he or she sits on the Appropriations Committee. Next slide. Now, you may find that you have to give lawmakers and staff a brief overview of the peer-reviewed cancer research program. And it's going to be particularly important this year because we have a lot of new members of Congress up on the Hill. And every time you have an election, there's a lot of juggling around of Hill staff. So you may have to do a little bit of education this year. Um, what, you, what you can tell uh, lawmakers and staff is that this program is run through the Department of Defense's um, Peer, um, I'm sorry, it's, it's run through the Department of Defense and it's under the umbrella of the Congressionally Directed Medical Research Program. Now, the peer reviewed cancer research program was first funded by Congress in 2019 and it supports research into specific areas as designated by Congress with relevance to military service members. And this program tends to support high risk, high reward research and complements NIH research. Next slide. Now, you may encounter some lawmakers who don't believe that medical research should be funded through the Department of Defense. And this is why we need to continue to draw the strong link between military service overseas and the risk of H. pylori, which in turn increases the risk of stomach cancer. Funding through the peer review cancer research program has really become a vital funding stream for stomach cancer research, and it has the potential to make a real difference. So we need to continue to fight for its continued inclusion and in funding. Now, over the past several years, there has been a significant increase in the amount of funding appropriated by Congress to the peer review cancer research program. And you can see here on the slide that the budget has gone, grown from 15 million in fiscal year 2013 to 90 million for the current fiscal year. And, and thanks to our collective efforts, stomach cancer was first included as eligible for funding in fiscal year 2015, and it has remained eligible ever since. The incredible advocacy of Debbie's Dream Foundation volunteers has resulted in 16 million in stomach cancer research funding, supporting about 23 research projects. And this is only through fiscal year 2017. So we have more um, funding going out the door for stomach cancer research, and, and we will be updating these, these figures soon. Next slide. As I was mentioning, we've been able to make a very persuasive case for why stomach cancer should be included in the peer review cancer research program. And that's because stomach cancer is a malignancy that has been recognized by the Department of Veterans Affairs as presumed to be service connected based on hazardous exposure to ionizing radi radiation. But more significantly, the research studies show that US soldiers living under field conditions may be at greater risk for H. pylori. And again, this is significant because H. pylori is the primary identified cause of stomach cancer. Next slide. The National Cancer Institute is another really important source of funding for stomach cancer research and why it's important for us to also advocate for increased funding for the National Cancer Institute. Now, this slide shows the great progress that has been made in securing more funding for the National Cancer Institute. And the orange blocks that you see there in fiscal years 17, 18, and 19 uh, show the funding that has resulted from the cancer moonshot. Now, recently, the director of the NCI explained that the increase of funding has led to more research applications, which is really great news. The bad news is, is that there's still so much worthy research that is going unfunded. And the bottom line is that Congress needs to continue its commitment to cancer research through increased appropriations. Next slide. 
So when you're on the Hill at the end of this month, we're also going to ask that you request that funding for the National Institutes of Health be increased by $2.5 billion and that the, the share for the National Cancer Institute be $6.5 billion, which would be an increase of $378 million. This increased funding in the NCI makes it possible for more research to be funded, including stomach cancer research. And I want you to know that because of our work together over the years, asking that the National Cancer Institute create the scientific framework for stomach cancer research, that we are very close to achieving that goal. As we speak, plans are underway at the National Cancer Institute for a Stomach Cancer Research Summit later this year. And through this, we hope that priorities for stomach cancer will be identified and ultimately more research funded. Included in your Hill packets will also be suggested report language, encouraging more, re encouraging more research progress on the recalcitrant cancers, those like stomach cancer that have a five-year survival rate of less than 50%. We'll be talking more about this um, during the advocacy training in DC. But this is a little bit different than last year. In addition to asking um, to be included in the peer review cancer research program, we're also going to be advocating for more funding for the National Cancer Institute. Next slide. Now, while you can read through the fact sheets and, and other information that will be provided on the Advocate Resource Center, I just want to take a few moments to cover a few key statistics. In 2019, it is estimated that more than 27,000 Americans will be diagnosed with stomach cancer, and nearly 11,000 will die from this disease. Um, it's important to point out in, in the Hill meetings that, that the low survival rates for stomach cancer are because the vast majority of patients are asymptomatic during the early stages of stomach cancer, or they'll present with um, symptoms that are characteristic of other types of GI disorders. Um, and we just don't have really good diagnostic tools at our disposal, or um, nor is, is widespread um, screening um, um, necessarily um, co a cost-effective um, um, approach. We want to point out that at stage four, the five-year survival rate is uh, just 5%, and that the overall five-year survival rate is 31%. It's also important beyond these statistics to emphasize that the incidence rates of stomach cancer um, in those particularly whites aged 25 to 39 have increased to 66%. And, and this data is significant because the expected frequency of stomach cancer all overall has declined over the past 80 years. Um, but uh, I, I think that for those of you who have attended Capitol Hill meetings in the past, I'm sure you can attest to the fact that most Capitol Hill staffers and members of Congress don't know much at all about this disease. And they really think that it only occurs in older populations. So we're, we're asking you to go to the Hill and to essentially set the set the story straight that um, we're, we're seeing some um, very concerning trends in stomach cancer in younger populations and that um, it isn't a, um, a, a cancer that is disappearing. Um, and this is why more research is, is really needed. Next slide, please. Now, when you share the need for increased stomach research funding, um, I think it's important to explain that without more foundational researchers, that it's very difficult for the average researcher to compete against the more well-established cancers. So it's, it's, it's one of these stories of research funding begets more research funding, right? So we really need a um, um, solid base of knowledge and, and research for our stomach cancer researchers to be able to really compete within the National Cancer Institute arena. And, and this is in, particularly, in particular why the funding through the peer review cancer research program is so very important because it allows that higher risk groundbreaking research to be funded. And that forms a really great framework for those investigators to be able to go to the NCI and get additional funding. Next slide. 
So here's your homework um, between now and when you travel to DC. I want you to draft a script, which can also be your advocate story for the packets that we'll be giving out to congressional members and their staff. So have your story down, make it an elevator speech, right? Because you're not gonna have a whole lot of time in those congressional offices, especially if you're walking in there with maybe three or four other advocates. Have your elevator speech down. Why are you there? You're gonna to wanna to review the Advocacy Day materials and talking points, and as I said before, all of that is going to um, be posted, or most of it will be posted on the DDF Resource Center um, before the lobby day. Take some time to read about your members of Congress, right? Both of your senators and your representatives. And that's easy to do. You just go to www.house.gov or www.senate.gov and navigate to your, your senators or your member of Congress's web page and just see what they've been up to and make sure you know a little bit about them before you walk into the office. If you have Debbie's Dream Foundation business cards, bring them with you. If you don't, just bring your regular business card um, or they'll be provided to you um, upon your arrival. Just have something you can leave behind so um, the staff member can get in touch with you after your meeting. Once again, I'm gonna remind you to wear um, uh, comfortable shoes. Um, this isn't about fashion, it's about being comfortable and you're gonna be doing a lot of running around on Tuesday. And I just, mostly I just want you to get excited about joining your fellow advocates and about making a difference. And if you've never done this before, you're gonna walk away, I think, completely energized, a little bit exhausted. Um, but the, the idea of going to the Hill and lobbying, members of Congress and their staff will be demystified and, and you'll realize how, how easy it really is and really how, warmly for the most part you'll be received in all the offices that you visit. And lastly, um, you will be given um, information for posting on social media. So we, we'd love for you to tweet while you're up on the hill and snap photos and share them on Facebook and share them with Debbie's Dream Foundation. Um, we will kind of go over maybe a few do's and don'ts during our advocacy training um, about using social media. You, we certainly don't want anyone to tweet that they had a horrible meeting with um, Representative Smith's office, um, but really just to promote that that we're up there in full force and, and advocating for stomach cancer research and awareness when we're on the Hill on February 26th. And, um, and just just know that um, you know with with more research, and that's why we're going to the hill. Um, we have um, a, a chance at in improving um, those low survival rates. So someday, I, I hope that stomach cancer is no longer a recalcitrant cancer, and that we're able to achieve um, higher survival rates for for individuals who um, receive this diagnosis. So with that, um, that's the end of my formal presentation, and I'm gonna turn it back over to DDF staff. Thank you, Camille, for that informative presentation. I will now begin reading questions from the participants that were submitted during the presentation. Um, our first question, how do I follow up after my meetings? That's a very good question. So we are going to, um, send you a template um, email that you'll be able to send to the offices that you visited with. Um, um, make sure that when you have your meeting that you ask for a card. Now you're gonna have your schedules and all of the contact information for, for the meetings will be on there, but ask for a card and, and follow up within um, a few days after your meeting. And, and we're gonna ask you to, to restate your request to that office. And, and most importantly, just to say thank you for their time. But we will um, prompt you to do that and we will be sending you the tools and information to do that after you leave Washington, DC. Thank you. The next question, can we wear jeans when we arrive on Sunday since there are no meetings? I will leave that to DDF staff, but I don't see any reason why um, you can't dress very casually on Monday. Next question. 
What if I run out of materials to hand out? Okay, so um, every group um, by state, we're gonna give um, a, a few extra folders. Um, and uh, staff and myself will have a few extra folders and we'll make sure that you have our phone numbers. So if you run into a situation where you have run out of folders, uh, you can um, give us a call and we will meet you and we will get you more, more folders. But we're, we're gonna do our best to make sure that everyone has more than, than they will possibly need. Do we get our own rooms or do we have to share? Your own what? Our own rooms or do we have to share? Oh, so I will let you answer that um, for the hotel rooms. Yes. So um, if you requested your own room and you were approved for scholarship, you would get your own room. However, if you are interested in sharing, we would be glad to accommodate you, and you could contact events at debbiesdream.org. Next question. When do I need to turn in my bio slash story? So yesterday. <laughs> um, I would love to get those stories so we can um, get those packets finalized and print it up it you know we we want to give uh, ddf staff enough time to get those packets copied and put in the folders and shipped to dc so if you could get me that in the next day or two that would be really fantastic okay um let's see the next question i'm a new advocate i'm a new advocate will i be paired up with someone else so most um, of our advocates will um, be with others from their state. There are a few advocates that are the only individuals from their state. When you get to DC and after you go through the training, if you would like to be paired up with another advocate whose schedule allows for that or I can join you on your first meeting or first two meetings. We'll, we'll make sure that if you're not comfortable going by yourself, that you have someone to go with at least to your first meeting um, and allow you to get your sea legs under you um, for, for the rest of the day. So um, I don't want anybody to worry about that. I don't want anyone to worry about not being clear on where they need to go or um, being nervous about their first meeting, um, I'll be there and we'll work it out. So um, I, I would just um, say that it is, it is far less intimidating than um, what, what you think it might be. And um, we'll, we'll make sure that you have the necessary support. Can we advocate for another state besides our own? So you can, um, we are scheduling meetings um, based upon um, two things, um, what you included on your registration information and the, meaning your, your home address and um, any other offices that you may have requested. Um, it is harder for us to get meetings with members of Congress who don't have someone, at least someone there from that state. Um, and so we, um, you know, we, unless there is um, a member of Congress that's not from your state that you have a really good relationship with, um, we won't be scheduling um, meetings um, um, outside of your, your congressional delegation. So again, if a specific request has been made and we're able to make some connection, um, then we'll, we'll go ahead and make that out of state uh, request. I'll just add that we are currently in the process of scheduling probably over 150 meetings. Um, not only will you be meeting with your two senators and your representative, but we are adding new members of Congress from your state we're adding members of Congress who sit on the Appropriations Committee from your state. Um, everyone is going to have probably at least four to five meetings 
there will be delegations that have a lot more meetings than that. So um, if you don't worry about not having a full day, and we're probably at the point now, I looked at the, the itinerary the other day, we're probably at the point where we can't add many more meetings just simply because we're not going to be able to fit them into your day. Can I bring my own materials into the congressional meeting, like a poster board or photos? Photos are awesome, right? So if you want to share a photo um, of, um, of, of, a, of a loved one, um, I, or, or, your, or your kids, or you know, what, you know, something to help you know, connect the story with a face, I I think that's great. Um, I don't, you know, posters, um, you know, just remember whatever you take to the hill, you got to carry it around with you all day long. How long are meetings scheduled for? So the average meeting, I would say, lasts about 15 minutes. That's what you should go in thinking, all right, that this meeting is going to be about 15 minutes long and I've got to get my message and my request across to this staffer or to the member of Congress in 15 minutes. Now, some meetings could actually be shorter and some could actually be longer. What we are doing on the scheduling end is to make sure that you have time to get from meeting A to meeting B. Um, specifically, we are trying to cluster all of the meetings on one side of the Capitol during one time of the day and meetings on the other side of the Capitol during another part of the day so you're not ping-ponging back and forth. Um, that said, it's going to be really important for you to pay attention to the time, right? If you only have a short time from one meeting to the next, you're going to have to make sure that you don't let that meeting drag on too long. You're going to want to get through your points and you're going to want to uh, um, close that meeting um, with enough time to get to your next meeting. The other thing that we do is we put phone numbers on the schedules, and we'll we'll share this again when we all get together in DC, but if you're running behind, just call that office, let them know you're meeting with Susie Q, and that you're running a little late, um, just so they can convey that to the person that you're meeting with. Um, but we are we are doing our best to make sure you have a full day but that you also have adequate time to get from meeting to meeting. Thank you so much, Camille. I've now read through all the questions submitted during our presentation. If you think of any additional questions after we conclude, or if you are listening to the recorded version, please submit your questions by email to events at debbiestream.org. Nicole will be your point of contact for Advocacy Day. I would like to thank our participants for joining us today and committing to traveling to Washington, D.C. for this important event. Thank you to our speaker, Camille Bonter, and, her, and to the DDF Executive Director, Andrea Eidelman. We're looking forward to seeing you in Washington, D.C.